Mike Jasicki showed up for his Zoom media session Monday wearing the jersey of teammate, fellow tight end and good friend Durham Smythe. And there was a very specific reason for it as Jasicki became on this day a combination of Smythe's agent and publicist. A few questions into it, Jasicki was asked about the dubious translation, bad, offensive pass interference penalty he was assessed that negated what would have an 18-yard catch. That prompted him to say he drove to the Baptist Health Training Complex on Monday with two things he figured he would discuss, the OPI and wearing Smythe's jersey. Jasicki made two things clear in talking about Smythe. He wanted it known that Smythe set a new season high for receiving yards during the game against the New York Jets on Sunday and the Dolphins should sign Smythe to a contract extension. I thought, I'm going to wear his jersey at my press conference today and start an initiative to get him paid here by the Miami Dolphins, Jasicki said. He's a good player, has a lot of success, does a lot of good things, special teams, offense, blocking, receiving. I mean, did it take a trick play to get him an 18-yard catch? It sure did, but nonetheless nobody knows that on the stat sheet. An 18-yard catch is an 18-yard catch. Jasicki and Smythe have taken friendly jabs at each other in media sessions since they both arrived as 2018 draft picks, so this was nothing new. Smythe had four catches for 37 yards in the 24-17 victory against the Jets, giving him 20 receptions for 221 yards on the season. His previous high was 208 in 2020. Happy for him, so I figured I would come in here wearing his jersey giving him a little boost, Jasicki said. I know he wouldn't do for me, but I'll do it for him. Durham is a guy that kind of guys under the radar and I'm just trying to elevate his, like, he's not even on the Pro Bowl ballot. That's another thing just get him on there. I've got to get in touch with NFL. Maybe we can get him on there and I'll vote for him. Smythe and Jasicki are among the 19 Dolphins players scheduled to become unrestricted free agents next March if they don't get an extension. Rest assured both, particularly Jasicki, took notice Friday when the Philadelphia Eagles signed tight end Dallas Godert to a lucrative four-year contract extension. Happy for him, Jasicki said. Very happy for him. He's a good player. I like Dallas a lot. I met him a couple of times and I don't have anything bad to say about him. He's a good dude, great player and I think he got exactly what he deserved. So we'll see what happens. Asked whether he thought Godert's contract, reported at four years for $57 million with $37.2 million guaranteed, raised the bar for tight ends, Jasicki said simply, I like when people get what they deserve. Jasicki has been consistent in declining to talk about his own contract situation this season but he certainly wasn't shy about talking about Smythe, which prompted a reporter to dub him, Assistant General Manager, Mike Jasicki. Yesterday he was like, you said I was slow last week, you said I ran a 4.9. I was like, bro, that was a joke, relax. So I figured today I'd come in here and give him all the praise and start his campaign to be a Miami Dolphin next year and moving forward. So Chris Greer, if you're listening, this is my campaign for Durham. Tua Tungavailoa puts together another good performance. Tua Tungavailoa had another good game on Sunday against the New York Jets but will it be enough to silence some of his doubters or just give them more fuel? The Miami Dolphins kept their winning streak alive with a big win over their division rival the New York Jets on Sunday. The victory at MetLife Stadium brought their winning streak to three in a row and helped many to shrug off the terrible seven-game losing streak that started the season. While the victory is good for a variety of reasons, one of the more important things that we got from this win was another strong performance from Tua Tungavailoa. Tua finished the day going 27 for 33 for 273 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. The interception was a poor ball that looked like it sailed on him in a bit resulting in an overthrow right into the hands of a Jets defensive back. After that interception, Tua settled down and put together a few good-looking drives that kept the offense going. It finally looks like he has started to get into a rhythm with this offense which is what everyone expected at the beginning of the season. Even with an atrocious offensive line, Tua was able to do some great things with the football. His throws were sharp, accurate and, for the most part, on time. He also handled the pressure well, most notably on his touchdown pass to Mac Hollins after being forced to step up into the pocket as it collapsed around him. These are the types of plays starting quarterbacks in the NFL need to make in order to lead their franchise to victory. With all of the talk about Tua's status as the franchise quarterback for this team, he continues to improve as the Dolphins' signal caller. There is no doubt that Tua needs to clean up the interceptions which have been a bit of an issue this season. But, 
Overall, I think there has been enough positive development in his game to continue to think that he is the future of this franchise. When he has played, this offense has looked considerably better than when Jacoby Brissett played. They have generated more scoring opportunities and Tua has looked like he is capable of making all of the throws he needs to make, even if he doesn't have the strongest arm out there. Overall, I think Tua has made some good strides as the starter for this team and should be the guy going into the immediate future.